Hello and welcome to the Vine Life Podcast. I'm Tony Clark, your host, and today I'm, I'm going to interview Shay Hoodman. Now, Shay is the founder and CEO of GotQuestions.org. GotQuestions is a ministry that seeks to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ by providing biblical, applicable, and timely answers to spiritually related questions through an internet presence. The Got Questions team have answered about 720,000 questions in the past 20 years, and the website has around, get this, 10 million visitors per month. And uh, Shay, thank you so much for coming on the program. And thank you for having me, Tony. It's uh, my pleasure to be here. Well, it's an honor on this side, but I've got to ask that question, 10 million visit- visitors a month. Did I get that correct? So. Um, we just finished our stats for January and January was our, um, busiest month ever. We actually hit 18 million visitors in January. So yeah, the, um, numbers of 10 million is fantastic. If you were to told me 20 years ago that we'd be getting 10 million visitors a month on the website, you're crazy. So the fact that we're even above and beyond that at 18 million now, it's, it's crazy, but to God be the glory. And our goal here is just to be used of God for as long as he sees fit to do so. And Shay, I've got to ask you, you, you're talking about going back 20 years or so. Now, it's my understanding that gotquestions.org basically began as a hobby for you. Is that correct? It did. So I give you the long story short version. It graduated from Bible college and seminary. And the whole time through, I didn't feel a clear calling from God into any of the quote unquote traditional forms of ministry. I'd always love technology, love to write. I'd still, even to this day, I'm a much better communicator through writing than I am through public speaking. So um, none of the traditional forms of ministry seemed like a really good fit. So my wife and I were serving in a local ministry and serving in our local church, but really praying, oh, Lord, what would be the ministry that'd be a perfect fit? Um, so God gave us the idea of launching a Christian website where people can come and just answer, ask whatever questions questions they have about the Bible, anything spiritual related. And truly, we thought, oh, this will be a fun little hobby we do in addition to whatever real ministry God calls us to. Well, little did we know, gotquestions.org launched in February of 2002 was the real ministry God was calling us to. And so the last now 21 years is watching God take what we thought was going to be a hobby and just exploding it into one of the most frequently visited Christian websites in the world. And even just today, I received an amazing testimonial from someone of how gotquestions.org has been such a huge benefit to them and their entire family. It's such a needed ministry for people to be able to come online and anonymously ask questions, truly ask the questions in our heart and receive answers from as we strive with all our hearts from a um, explicitly biblical perspective. Yeah, and, and that's that's the key there. Um, and I've been using Doc Questions off and on for the past couple of years. I, I think maybe a couple of years I kind of discovered your website because I had basic basic questions that I wanted to ask or have answered about certain passages of scriptures uh, or of scripture. And I, your ministry was certainly able to do that, or at least lead me in the in the correct direction. I, I appreciate that. Uh, but you know, getting back to your beginnings to GotQuestions.org, Shay. Um, you've got a, a photo. I think at the, your your initial office was in a bedroom. Is that correct? Can you can you fill me in a little bit on that? Yeah, we truly um, the first oh, two and a half years of the history of the ministry it was primarily run out of a desktop computer in our bedroom. But that was the only space we had for a one bedroom apartment. Um, living in Kansas City, Missouri at the time, and yeah. Um, so I, I took a picture of that computer, and it's it's a cool little reminder of the, um, the humble beginning. Is a reminder of well, this was God's idea, not ours. I mean, we had no grandiose plans. Oh, this will be, um, we'll be we'll be doing for the next twenty years of our life. This will impact millions of people. No, it's like hey, this it'd be fun to actually answer people's questions that people would come to us and ask questions. And it's not like we I don't have to go preach on a street corner or knock on doors. It's like, no, people will come to us and ask their questions and we can answer. And this is great. Um, so yeah, but yeah, that uh, love that picture. 
Um, maybe when you publish this episode, you could put that picture up. Let me know if you want me to send you a copy. Absolutely. I, I, that's an, that's an amazing of a, a really humble beginning and, and how God basically uses something that's insignificant and he, he, he flourishes it if, if we're willing to put our trust in him and, and lead where he goes. So yeah, I certainly appreciate that. That's a great story. Now, now Shay, you guys, it's not just you that got questions. You've got a staff now as well. Can you talk about your staff? Sure. Um, my wife, Melissa and I are co-founders of the ministry. Um, for the first several years, we're the only people who are involved on it in terms of like a full-time basis. So very quickly, we started developing a team of volunteers to help us answer all the questions. But now, um, 20 years later, we have a staff of 11 employees, um, eight full-time, three part-time, wow. um, a, a team of over 200 volunteers to help us answer all the questions we receive. And then I don't know, a few dozen contractors who help us in various aspects of the ministry, whether it's video work or translations or even writing now. Um, just, um, I, I look at them as not official employees, but also very, very valuable contributors to the ministry. So yeah, there's, on a daily basis, there's over 200 people who are involved in the ministry in some way, not counting the um, hundreds of thousands of people who are hitting the website every day. Well, that again, that's that's amazing. And and you guys now you're just not a question and answer. You've also got some podcasts and you've got some uh, videos answering those questions as well. Can you speak about that a little bit? Sure. So I mean, as you read our um, our purpose statement earlier um, is to use the Internet um, to answer people's viable questions. So anywhere online people are going to search for answers to the questions we want to be there. So you mentioned specifically the video ministry. So um, YouTube is the number two search engine in the world after wow. Google. More people are going to YouTube and searching for does God exist? Who is Jesus? Those types of crucially important questions um, than any of them being or Yahoo or um, any of the other search engines that are out there. So we start recognizing the importance of creating video versions of our answers and the podcast. I mean, I can tell you several years, people are like, why doesn't God questions have a podcast? I mean, you guys have had such great contests. Why don't you content? Why don't you do a podcast? Um, so we were resistant because I mean, I didn't really get the genre of podcasting that much. I, I don't have the time to listen to a lot of podcasts, but um, once we launched it almost two years ago now, um, we came pretty quickly to know this is another avenue where people love to listen to podcasts. Um, and just knowing that each podcast episode we publish, that there are um, people who this is meeting a direct need that they have, answering a question they have that they maybe wouldn't want to read an article or even watch a video. But if they can listen to a podcast on their way to work that deals with an issue they're struggling with. So, again, anywhere people are looking for truth in an online context, we want to be there with our best shot at giving them a biblical answer. Well, you certainly do a, a great job of that, and I'm certainly appreciative. Uh, Shay, one of the things that I appreciate, appreciate about your ministry is you don't major on the minors. In other words, you deal with non-essential issues in the Christian faith, and you have the attitude from, from reading you, your writings online and, and your answers to questions uh, from your perspective, it's okay to disagree on non-essential issues in the Christian faith. Can you fill me in a little bit about that? What, just in your own opinion, what are non-essential issues in the Christian faith, and why is it okay to disagree? Yeah, I, I really like how you phrase the the question there. Um, and we get, it's interesting, we get compliments similar to what you just said, that we um, handle tr strive to handle non-essential issues in a, a fair manner, um, being willing to agree to disagree, to major on the majors and minor on the minors, those type of things. And then at the same time, we occasionally will get a complaint of, why do you take such a strong stance on this issue when it's something Christians can disagree about? It's like, you know what? The way we look at answering questions is if, like, Tony, if I came to you and asked you a question, hey, what do you think this Bible verse means? 
well, Tony, I'm not asking you, give me the 10 interpretations of this verse and just allow me to decide. No, I'm asking you, what do you think is the right understanding of this verse? And so that's how, how we kind of view people you know, coming us answer, asking us the question. So if it's an issue where we think there are multiple possible viewpoints, what we'll generally do is okay, here are the different views and then here's the one we prefer and why. Start doing our best to present the other views that we don't hold or reject fairly. Um, but ultimately, if they're asking us a question, we're going to give them, here's the answer. In some, in some articles, even when there are other views, if it's an important enough issue, we're not going to spend so much time listing all the different views and said, no, this is one I really just going to give you, here's what I think is the right answer and why. Because we don't want people confused. We don't want people spending so much time focusing on different viewpoints that they miss what actually is, what we believe is the correct viewpoint. And even to an extent, knowing people's attention spans, knowing how quickly people often abandon an article they're trying to read, that if we spend so much time, well, here are the four views, and then we don't actually get to what we think is the correct view till the fourth one, 50% of our audience is gone at that point. So we have to be careful with how we write. So even when we don't say, here are the different views, we're not dismissing them as possibilities. We're not saying that those who hold those views aren't our brothers and sisters in Christ or they're heretics or um, they need to be shunned in some sense. No, we're just saying, look, this is an important issue. Here's what we think is the right issue. Um, still and presented in a speaking the truth in love sort of attitude. And, and with that, I, I imagine you guys get probably a lot of haters out there. Is that correct? Uh, we, we do. Um, I'm always happy that we get more compliments than we do complaints. Um, we have a testimonials page on got questions. That whenever we have a day where it seems like we're getting a lot of complaints, I, haters, I can go back to the testimonials and just read those and, okay, God, Thanks for reminding me that you are using this. Um, I'm in for another day, another week, another year. Um, but usually the haters are, I, I don't want to mischaracterize them in any way, but most often there's someone who has a soapbox or a hobby horse issue where yeah. they have made something non-essential into this is their issue to fight over. Um, one common one is um, who are the sons of God and daughters of men in Genesis chapter six. It's a fascinating issue, but in terms of salvation, in terms of all the important things of Christian life, it's not that important. Or people who will take them. Um, I'm getting called a, a heretic who doesn't know the Lord because I had a different view on them on who was the disciple whom Jesus loved. Oh, wow. It, so it's it's weird little things like that that some people, for whatever reason, they lock in on this one issue and they make it the end all be all of everything. And if you don't agree with them on that one issue, well, then oh, I can't I can't fellowship with you. Or people who say, I agree with 99% of the articles on Got Questions, but since I disagree with you on this one issue, I can't trust anything you say anymore. It's stuff like that that just can be really head scratching head banging, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it's yeah. like, ah, oh, come on. So um, but some of the haters, um, they're of, sometimes they'll be from cults or Christian groups who uh, we have a disagreement with them on a fairly important issue like baptism or um, some of the differences between Catholics and Protestants, those type of issues where they are really, really important. But for the most part, I wouldn't describe them very often as haters. They're just strong disagreeers, I so to speak. But yeah, anytime you're answering a question, and especially if you attempt to tackle some of the more difficult issues, um, you're going to get haters, as I'm sure, Tony, you've experienced on occasion as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and, and I, I I did a little bit of research, I, you know, for, for Googling or searching God questions, and you come up with um, God questions is, is, you know, is is false because it disagrees with my non-essential issue. And I'm not going to go into those. It's no sense of going into those non-essential issues. But I, I, I did see that. And uh, but that 
I think that leads into the more important question of the essential issues of the Christian faith. And I've seen you answer this question, so I feel confident in asking you. Uh, we've talked about non-essential issues that don't deal with how a person is made right with God, basically, mm -hmm. or, or a person is born again. But what are what are some essential issues in the Christian faith that we have to hold on to tightly? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, to give you a little background on this, when we we have several articles like what are the essentials of the Christian faith? What are the core teachings? What are the essentials of the gospel? What do you actually have to believe to be saved? There was even some friendly disagreement among like the writers and the editors trying to figure out what exactly do we need to include in this? Because is this, is this a very important issue or is this a truly, this is the gospel type of issue. But if we're going to try to narrow it down to like, th these are the core issues a person must believe in order to be saved. Well, um, salvation by grace alone, through faith alone in Christ alone. Um, the, the deity of Christ I mean, who, to the core of who is Jesus Christ? I mean, obviously the does God exist type of question. Well, if you don't believe that God exists, well, basically you throw out virtually everything that's in the Bible. So those type of issues, um, I mean, some people will put the um, inspiration or inerrancy of scripture in there. And I'm like, I believe in the ins inspiration and inerrancy of scripture, but I know some people who I truly think they know the Lord who do not believe in the inerrancy of scripture. I think that's a very dangerous viewpoint to have, but I'm not going to question their faith on that issue. Um, some people will say the, the virgin birth is a um, non-negotiable issue. And it's like, I believe in the virgin birth. I believe the Bible teaches it. I believe it's very important, but does that have to, do we have to share the virgin birth of Christ when we're sharing the gospel with someone? And I'm not hundred percent sure we need to do that. I don't know that I've ever, brought it up. If someone asks a question about it, of course, I'm, here's what the Bible says, but it's some of those things that are very closely related to the identity of Christ issue or the salvation issue. Um, that's like, no, I, I think the actual, here's what you must believe to be saved. We need to keep that as narrow as possible. And so that's what we try to do. It got questions, but um, every time we say something as a non is not a non-negotiable We'll catch a little flack. How can you say this is not important? Yeah. Or someone can believe that and, and be saved. It's like, because it's not related to how we're actually saved. So um, I don't know if that answers your questions, but it's it's a struggle because if I were to create a list of what I think should be included, it would probably be a little longer than what the Bible actually says. Yeah. But if I try to focus on what does the Bible actually teach about who God is, who Jesus is, how to be saved, there don't, there's not seem to be that many non-essentials outside of that um, core doctrine right there. Very well said. And thank you for that. Um, Shay, I'm curious. Um, surely you must get some bizarre and strange questions. <laughs> Off the top of your head, can you give me a, a really strange question that you've gotten in the past that you just scratch your head when you get that so, question? Yes. Yeah, so often when I will either do an interview like this or – go speak at a church or a conference and someone will start the question, have you ever been asked? And often I'll just stop them right there and say, the answer to the question is yes, but now go ahead and complete the sentence because yeah, we've been asked anything and everything you can imagine and a whole bunch of things you wouldn't want to imagine. Um, I'm literally right behind the camera. I'm looking at, we have a whiteboard where we write up the funny questions that we receive. And a lot of them are just funny because of, for whatever reason, but some are funny because of misspelling. Some of them are funny because of autocorrects from people using their phones. So I could give you a whole bunch of those. Um, usually when I like to share what I think is the most funny, non autocorrect question we've ever received was essentially, is it wrong to take homeless people bowling? <laughs> and then gamble on which of them is going to win. And that's a summary of the question, but essentially what was happening, these young guys and college age guys were picking up homeless people, taking them to a bowling alley, buying them a meal, paying for them to go bowling, and then not having any idea which of the homeless people were the better bowler, 
gambling on which of them is going to win. And first time I got the question, I'm like, are you, are you kidding me? Um, obviously the Bible doesn't address gambling on ho homeless bowlers, but yeah. there are principles that can apply. Um, would Jesus use people for entertainment? Um, yeah. If yeah. you have to go to this extent to fix, find a satisfaction for your gambling fix, you might have a gambling problem. And is this the best use of your time? So see if we can take an issue that the Bible doesn't directly address and apply biblical principles to it. And that's a lot of what, a lot of the questions that we're getting now that with over 9,000 articles on the site, most of the questions that are submitted to us now are more obscure. But um, now the, the funny questions, they're a, often a welcome reprieve from yeah. Yeah. the more serious ones we have to deal with. And um, often here in the office, someone will, oh, hey, everyone come out. You have to hear this question we got. And so then we'll come out and hear this, the, the newest funny question. But yeah, it's surveying got questions is a rewarding ministry, a challenging ministry. And at times, uh, we thank God for it. It can be a very entertaining ministry to be a part of as well. Well, I guess I guess God has a sense of humor as well. So that's that's it. That's entertaining. I, I can see where that would lift your spirits in essence with all of the hard questions and the the the, the in depth questions that you do get. But Shay, I'm curious. Um, your, your typical day at God questions and your staff's typical day behind the scenes. What is it? What does a day look like for you? It's got to be very busy. You know, if I were to, in a sense, write like what my dream ministry position would be my dream job. It'd be doing almost exactly what I'm doing. Um, except for as the ministry's grown, the administrative part of it has grown as well, which I'm thankful I've been able to hand off some of it. But just as the, for now, the God appointed leader of Got Questions, administration is a part of it. And it's not something I know it's necessary. I know it's important, but it's not something I enjoy. So a typical day for me, I come in, respond to any um, important emails that have come in overnight. Um, every day, one of our employees goes through all the questions that was submitted the previous day and will either answer those, assign them to a volunteer or copy and paste an article if it answers the question. Um, thankfully, in the afternoons, I reserve some time for me to do some writing, writing of new articles, whether from the site or from the uh, for our blog site. Um, on days like today, we'll set aside some time to do a podcast recording the occasional interview and so forth. So um, I think that all of my days is involved. You ask me questions about God questions and um, you could wake me up at two in the morning and I could probably do a, oh, this might be a funny challenge, could probably do a reasonable job at answering um, questions about the ministry because it's my passion. It's my, it's my life. It, um, it's something I, I love doing and I am excited every day to go to work, but um I love that the job responsibility is varied. I'm not doing the exact same things every day. I get to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but it all focuses back on how can we get the answers that we have written, we have composed, we've recorded into more and more people's hands because we truly believe a lot of people are searching for these answers and we believe the answer to them biblically is what's most important. So how do we get the content in front of as many people as possible? And so, um, finding creative ways, innovative ways to do that. It's, it's a fun challenge to be a part of. And even the administrative stuff, I know it's important. And I know in the end, it does contribute to what we're accomplishing. So average day is um, a mixture of admin, of a little bit of writing, occasionally some video, um, negotiating with contractors, um, typical business type stuff that goes on in ministry. But end all, if I could do more of just actually writing content and delivering content and finding ways to get the content into more and more people. I would enjoy even more of that, but um, thankfully God surrounded me and the ministry with a great team and getting the right person plugged in each responsibility is, is key so that we're all loving what we're doing or at least loving 90% of what we're doing, which then makes the 10% much more bearable. You know, what a blessing it is to be in a, a, a job that you love and that you know that the Lord is using for his purposes. So Amen. that's certainly it, it, from this side, it seems like a, certainly a blessing uh, that God has granted to you. 
and, and the job position that you currently have. And 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 I'm curious, Shay, um, just from your perspective, where where would you like to see Got Questions go in the future? Do you have any long term plans for Got Questions, or are you just taking it day by day? Um, both. <laughs> we ha- have long term plans, but then also um, day by day in the sense we need to be nimble enough that we can adjust um, really any direction the um, internet goes in terms of where are people searching for answers to their spiritual related questions, we want to be there. So like we talked about earlier, transitioning into focusing a lot more on video. Um, several years ago when apps became hugely popular, developing an app for Android and iPhone so that people can um, find their answers that way. Um, the different video platforms. It's not just well, YouTube is by far number one. There's several other possibilities out there. Um, a c- couple of years ago, when suddenly the Alexa and the Google Home devices, where you have this little device that's spying on you 24-7, 365, and you can ask the questions, developing a little got questions module for that. So it's those type of things. So whatever direction the internet goes, we want to find a way to be there. Um, but then also, I don't envision, envision any of the key ways that got questions is currently seeking to reach people are going to change. People are still going to be going to Google and searching for information five, 10, 15 years from now. People are still going to be watching videos online. All, none of that's going to change, but there may be different ways of doing it, um, expanded ways of doing it, and then new ways of doing it. And just trying to keep our finger on the pulse of technology, where it's going, how people are using it. And is there a way that we can use this um, for God's glory? Amen. And Shay, if someone wants to financially support Got Questions or just support you in general, how can they do that? Uh, thank you for asking. Um, the Our number one prayer request is always for discernment and discernment about all the things I was just talking about, that we want to be sensitive to the Lord's leading of what are his priorities for the ministry? What do we need to be focusing on? Is there Anything we need to be doing less of? Is there anything we need to be doing more of? Um, we recognize God's hand in the 20 year history of the ministry, and we want to be sensitive to his leading for the next however many years he so chooses to use Got Questions as a part of his kingdom. Uh, for financial support, we are supported. Our support is about 90% through donations and about 10% through other Christian ministries we allow to advertise on gotquestions.org. Um, so if you would like to donate, there is a donate link. I got questions and on there, you can either donate online or through the mail. And we are very appreciative um, for any gift people can give. And our primary giver, um, vast majority of our givers are just people who have found got questions that are useful over the years, who we have answered some questions that they um, needed answers to and we've helped them to grow in their walk with Christ and pointed people to a closer relationship with him. And they're grateful. And we can't think of a better way. Let me say this the right way. That is the sort of person we would want to donate to Got Questions. Those who have found the ministry beneficial and want to express both their gratitude, but then also a desire for the ministry to be furthered. So, yeah, people have said, I've been coming to your site for years and I've never seen the, the donate link. And, you know, I, to me, it's there. It's not super prime. It's not flashing. But I, I like that. I don't want people to think that we're in this for the money. I don't want people to think that, oh, God, Questions is only doing this, so I'll make a donation. So that's not a motivation at all. It's just a reality in order for us to keep doing this to pay, as we talked earlier, 11 employees and web hosting and videos and translations. All of that takes money. And we're continually thank God for how he's provided and that never missed a bill. No one's ever missed a paycheck. God has been extremely faithful and always meeting our needs above and beyond what we can imagine. Very wise words. And Shay, is there anything else you'd like to add about uh, your ministry? Wow. Um, I just briefly, and just because uh, there was a, a conversation I've had recently with someone who said something to the effect of, I love got questions because it frees me from having to be prepared to answer people's questions. I'm like, okay, that's not the right attitude. I mean, it's one thing to say, 
that's when I asked you a tough question to say, I don't know, but I know this great website you can go to. Yeah. But as long as you're willing to say, I don't know, but I'll get back to you is a much better response than just, hey, I don't know. And I don't have time to research here. Just go to this website instead. Um, we're there for you as a last resort, but we would much prefer people in the interpersonal context. Like, Tony, I asked you a, a tough question that you don't happen to know the answer to off the top of your head. Uh, I'd much rather you tell me, you know, Shay, I, I don't know the answer to that one, but I'll get back to you. And then, then do your research. Do your research that got questions and the other great sites that are on the internet and read commentaries or theology books or whatever you need to do to find the answer. But then go back to that person and answer them personally with the information you found rather than just, hey, let's go to this website. Because to me, that's a little cold that as much as I love and believe in internet-based ministry, um, it should not be used as a excuse for refusing to engage in the in-person, interpersonal ministry that um, we are all to varying degrees called to. Words of wisdom and Shay Hoodman, um, the CEO of gotquestions.org. And Shay, I'm going to ask you to hang on for just about two minutes uh, post-interview uh, here. But Shay, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thanks, Tony. I love our conversation. And um, thank you for the questions you asked. Absolutely. Thank you. And until next time.